Potentially toxic blue-green algae is once again spreading across Lake Erie. Our storm teammates Ellen Baca talked with local water quality experts to find out whether we're at risk of seeing a big bloom in Lake Michigan. If anything, experts say Lake Michigan's algal content is a little on the low side, but some of our inland lakes like Muskegon and Makatawa could be at future risk. The only time the lake looks green in West Michigan is when rain is rolling in on the radar. But one state away, the water is turning green with algae. Well, the algal blooms in Lake Erie cover hundreds of square miles. Soupy, slushy, blue-green algae is once again taking over Lake Erie. It's blooms like this that local expert Alan Steinman is studying here in Muskegon. And we're doing an experiment in the growth chamber right now. One of my graduate students has got algae from Lake Makatawa. Simon says not all algae is bad, but blue-green algae can be. And it takes three things to cause a hazardous bloom. Sunlight, nutrients, and warmth. One of the big reasons why algae is less likely to form on Lake Michigan is the water just stays too cold. Well, in Lake Michigan itself, it's a much larger lake, so there's a lot more volume of water. It's not going to warm up nearly to the same degree as Lake Erie does. Steinman says Lake Michigan also lacks the nutrients to produce a bloom. But even though our big lake is safe, our inland lakes are at risk. When they, they form in the inland lakes, they can cover almost half of Muskegon Lake, half of Lake Makatawa. Um, just enormous amount, and they are really, really thick. In fact, there was just a big bloom 10 years ago in Spring Lake. Uh, you can literally write your name in the algae growing on the surface of the lake. And so I could take my finger and write Allen. I mean, it's that thick, and then it would stay because, you know, it's like green paint. That's how people refer to it as green paint. Okay. Steinman says the nutrients the algae feeds on are things like phosphorus and nitrogen. These can run off in rain from fields and farmland, and they're the best way to stop the blooms from occurring. Now, there are a few things that can keep algal blooms even from our inland lakes. And one of the big things is watching what goes in our storm drains. Everything that goes in here goes into our local rivers and lakes. None of it is filtered. So if we can keep things like fertilizer and soap out of our storm drains, it'll keep that risk of algal blooms on the low side. Ellen Baca, 24 Hour News 8.